Welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, grateful that you've made us part of your morning. This is the AM show on the Joy News channel. Wherever you're from or wherever you're watching us from, grateful for um, uh, getting here with us today. Guess what? On the news review, I've been joined by my brother. You know, I'm from the South. But when Joy News brought me here, they didn't just leave me hanging. They brought a brother from another part of the country, the North. So, you know, me from the South, my brother from the North, and we're all somewhere. And it's just an exciting relationship we do share amongst ourselves. Now, Samuel Imbura is my man. For the bridge. Charlie, what's up? So in your language, how do you say Akwaba? Oh, yeah. I mean, all right, so we say Zare in the Gruni language. Zare. Zare. Me Zare. Welcome. Oh, OK. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, so Imbura, Zare. 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 Then you say, you also say what? Naba. Naba. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Zare. Mm. Naba. Zare. Zare. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so if you are from. Uh, what, of, uh, uh, what, hunter, what language? Hunter language. Hunter language. I speak Gruni. Uh, that's, so this is Gruni. Yeah, that's Gruni. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm here. It's Akwabala. Oh, okay. It's so Akwaba. And you respond? Yeah, I'm here. Like, yeah, I'm means, yeah, my own. I see. So you can say, yeah, man, mine. Yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anyway, yeah. uh, so I have the ABC News. You do have? I have the Daily Guide and the Daily Statesman. Okay. But, but let's start with what has been the outstanding story for you with, within the week. Of course, I think the issue that has to do uh, with the food supplies, you know, some of the, the national food suppliers uh, raising alarm that if government does not pay their outstanding arrears, uh, the claim is 18 months, but what I'm told is that um, it's about 18 badges, the pay in badges. The reason is a story for the week for me. It had to do with the fact that um, you know schools will be resuming soon, next mm. month. Mm. So what it means is that if these areas are not cleared, then uh, we are likely to see shortage of food or even possible postponements of mm. uh, school because of the, the, I mean, the outstanding areas. So I only hope that I mean, the monies will be released. Yesterday, we spoke with the buffer stock, and then what we were told was that uh, some money is about 205 million, uh, 275, about 275 million cities will be released. And I hope that, I mean, the finance ministry works on it, and then they to be disbursed. If not all, at least it can give some assurances to them. And also, the school feeding caterers. Yesterday, you heard Madam Julian uh, Kujo. Some of them are suffering because... Their monies have not been paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are sick. Mm. They don't have the money mm. to even buy medicine. Yeah. And you know it's mostly pre-finance. You pre-finance yeah. it and the government will later sure. reimburse mm -hmm. you and all that. And that's, that's to me, the, yeah. the touching story for the I, I, mean, I mean, yesterday when I was speaking to her, I, I felt her pain. Yeah. You know, you could feel her pain from her voice. She was not well. And the fact that she's not well and the monies too are stuck with government, yeah. you could just feel that, nah, things are just not right. Yeah. So I, I hope that government can find a way to deal with this. Because exactly. one thing yeah. is, once you don't take care of them well, you're yeah. not helping them to grow their businesses. Because, yeah. well, they may be caterers for now, but they could take advantage of that and to even expand to be cooking for other companies. Yeah. So if you don't help them to grow, then you are also not helping them to create more jobs, you know. So I'm much particular about the situation mm. because if you go to the deprived regions, mm. if you go to deprived communities, you weep. Yeah. Kojo, you may sit in a cry here and think that, oh, it's not anything, we can delay them. You are comfortable in your office in a cry here. Mm. Someone is in a community somewhere mm. in the western part, in the eastern part, in the upper east region, deep down there. We know how the poverty situation is already in the country. Now, we are looking at how we can bridge the, um, the poverty. education okay. gap mm. within the north and the south. Mm. You go there, and then this is actually a motivation for some children to go to school. Yeah. How much is it? Once it's 50 pesos or so. And no, it's look, not even up to one. It's not I even up to one. 90 pesos. Yeah, 90 pesos. Uh, they want to increase for, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's not even enough. They are just trying to help or the caterers are coming in with their own monies to pre-finance and government will reimburse them. So imagine the caterers in a community somewhere in the north are unable to cook. Mm -hmm. The children may not go to school. And in, definitely in, in, in have a tool on the education sector. Story, yeah. he, 
he, he spoke about the impact of school feeding program. Yeah. Now, now because the, the children are not getting the, 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 the food, mm. parents are even withdrawing them from the school because they, they don't have it. They don't have the means to, to, to get to school. Mm. And that they are venturing into other things. So if it continues, it means that the purpose for the program will be will defeated. Be defeated yeah. you know? So it's, it's important that government mm. will find a way to ensure that all of these challenges that you know, confront the school feeding program mm have been dealt with. Yeah. If, if not, we would have a problem, like, like you're saying, there are places that without the school feeding program, children cannot go to school, school because yeah. they are not assured of, of meals. Mm. And some of them go to school because they know that when they go, they will get something to eat. Yeah. So if that, that, that incentive has been, is not coming, yeah. then it means that you are preventing them from getting that motivated to go to school. So the earlier government, you know, wait into this and, and find means mm. of settling the suppliers and also the caterers mm. would have a huge issue on our hands. I, I, I don't want to have, uh, you know, see a situation when kids who should be in school are not going to school because of... You Bruce, know, let me just share this, to get let, let me share to this document. It's a research by the University of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then um, the abstract of it, not, I'm just reading excerpts, it's mm -hmm. from data 2014. And then they said the process of the study was to examine how the Ghana school feeding program has impacted on the enrollment, mm. attendance, and retention of children in school, beneficiary basic schools in, they actually use the Gasout municipality. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, situations Gasout that... Gasout is greater Accra. Yeah, greater Accra. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So the, the target population for the study was, um, the, the target population for the study was the 68 participating schools in Gasout municipality uh, of the greater Accra region and other stakeholders of the program. The public relations officer of the Ghana School Feeding Program District Desk Officer uh, is, spoke about the school implementation committee. Uh, they also included all these people and they wanted to know the impact of this particular school feeding. And then what they noticed or what they revealed was that the research was able to reveal some successes and failures of the Ghana School Feeding Program. Prominent among the successes are the moderate increase in enrollment, attendance and retention, an increase in involvement in learning and cognitive ability of students and employment creation. Mm. Mm. This is what the research is saying. This is yeah. coming from 2014 from the University of Ghana. So if, if the schools stop cooking, meaning mm. retention is going to be a challenge. Oh, exactly, yeah. Parents will definitely draw their children mm. from the schools. Mm. Now, the other one has to do with the cognitive aspect of the children. There's no lack of concentration. Because you can't, you can't learn on an empty stomach. Yeah, no, you Look, can't. you go to some community, Jojo has been instrumental in mm. exposing some of these rots in our schools. Mm. And you see the, the children sprawling on the floor. The classroom is already in a sorry state. Yeah. It's, so if the classroom is already in a sorry state, the environment is not conducive enough to learn, and you are learning on an empty stomach, imagine the impact mm. and the Ghana school feeding is somehow in, in Tartus. Mm. And it worries me a lot. It worries me mm. a lot. And I think that it's an issue that we, should, we shouldn't oh, yeah. play with. Yeah, because exactly. If we really want to mm. move forward as a country, our education should mm. not be in this sorry state. I, 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 I think that government, make it a priority. government should have dedicated sources of funding for some of these projects. School feeding and free SHS. For free SHS, we know that it's coming from the annual budget funding yeah. amount. So, so as for that, we know. But when it comes to school feeding, where are we drawing the revenues from to pay them? We should, we should have that settled so that it's not like because we struggle to make the money, we are not getting it. So all these caterers and these suppliers, and then they will just get up and say, if you don't pay us, we're not supplying. That hurts the program. So um, I hope that government will find Exactly. I think in the past, there were other interventions from the, especially the USAID. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was in basic school, mm -hmm. We used to have what we call the attendance. You come in, and that was for the female. The target was to increase yeah. female enrollment. Oh, you, so when you, were, you, come, you were doing that? Yeah, so what, when they come to school, they mark the register. Oh, that's for marking the register. Yeah, so, no, they, talking, they this, no, this is a special register for okay. the female. Okay. So that women or the mothers in the rural areas would encourage their children or their female child to, uh, children to mm. attend school. Okay. So when you come, they will mark. At the end of the term, mm. They will give them oil, they will give them rice, mm. and it was actually a motivation, and it was something that was consistent, but now they have stopped. And when they did that, I mean, research is there to show, it actually increased enrollment, okay. it also brought about retention, and then 
the cognitive aspect was, mm -hmm. was I mean, getting I, better. I, I, I think the somehow, problem with some of those projects is yeah. that when it comes to implementation, when, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know so somebody will say, okay, what's your ev yeah. uh, evidence? But you see, when we are implementing such projects mm -hmm. and we see that, oh, there's money, mm -hmm. so we don't tend to implement it to the letter yeah. and we tend to pass some ways with some of the money, yeah. then... The, the agency that give you the money will probably yeah. uh, not have the desired results and, and pull out. Yeah. But you said it led to the increment in enrollment, exactly. which, which meant that it, it achieved its purpose. purpose. So yeah. why did so it imagine stop? we're able to, to continue, continue or sustain this. So, it's, well, it's a broader discussion about how exactly. we, we support yeah. or fund social interventions. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's a sort of discussion we should have in this country. Yeah. How do we fund social interventions such that would ensure that we derive the benefit and they are lasting? Yeah. So we, the funding doesn't go, and then we tend to have all of these challenges. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we also had the Kumeu by election exactly. uh, this week, week uh, uh, yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, it was on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we were monitoring from election headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, at least our guys in Kumasi were able to do a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm only impressed by the fact that uh, there were not serious casualties or there were no serious incidents, mm. just like in the IELTS West World gone by election, the famous ITY and then all those things. And I think on a general score, in terms of security wise, it was well coordinated. I, I saw uh, Dr. Dan Parry and his team, mm. good morning to him. They did a fantastic job mm. with the coordination on the grounds. Look, they actually drew security men not only from Ashanti region, they took people as far as um, the Bono region, they brought them from Brekum. You know, they have a special force. They have actually trained in managing crowd and all these forces came into force, and then they were able to at least avert possible casualties. Mm. And I think the political leaders and their, their candidates also did a decorous campaigning, mm. a reason we did not get uh, some of these incidents. I know Kumasi, uh, I've lived in Kumasi, I know how the people of Kumasi are, they are hospitable. Mm. The chiefs also came in, spoke to them, and I think at the end, uh, cool heads prevailed, and then we had that results. And okay. I think this is one of the elections mm -hmm. that I can say, by election that I can mm -hmm. say, it was somewhat peaceful. But the outcome was obvious that the NPP candidate was going to win. Okay. If you look at the political history of Kumau, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite clear that mm -hmm. the NPP candidate, yeah. I mean, my thinking was maybe the independent candidate could have done a magic, but, but at the end, what he, we he saw, didn't. Uh, I'm, I, I wouldn't say that the knapsack mm -hmm. prayers that they gave to the farmers there influence the voting party. What I would NAPSA, have, what I, NAPSA, I know I saw I saw videos. Okay. Videos of NASA sprayers being shared to mm. the, the farmers. And I don't know if that was to influence them. But they said, oh we are just giving this to you. Mm. We know you are in a farming community and all those things. So uh, aside those I mean uh, reports of every fifty Ghana I remember one mm. of our colleagues, Nada Boachi, Adam talking about someone saying he received fifty CDs and but that's why I think that uh, democracy in the country is somehow decaying. Mm. Uh, you see, I, I'm thinking of putting out an article that says the voter should shut up. You don't have any right to complain after selling your vote to the, <laughs> to the politician. You've sold your conscience. You've sold your conscience. So if the person thinks that, oh, I've given them, like, I've given you 50 cities, 100 cities, you come to vote for me, uh, that's a routine. So you can't demand any, uh, what do you call it, developmental project from the person. You know, there are some constituencies that I know up there, some politicians will make loose comments that, oh, these people, I know they are antidote. The only thing is I want to get into election, get some uh, rappers, get some, um, uh, this in Keta school boys, get some Maggie, go and share to them, get some uh, sewing machines, go and share to them and they'll vote for you. So such a person, uh, if, if you took money from the person to vote for the person, you can't hold the person to account. The person feels like, yes, mm. I bought the vote, and because I bought the vote, you, have, you don't have that gravitas to ask me for any developmental project. I think that if the people are empowered, some of these things would not recur. That a, a politician will go and gather money. You know, sometimes when they are doing the, the, the implementation or they are doing their budget and political budget, and so, okay, this particular constituency, we need like 500,000 cities. We need like 1 million. There are some constituencies that say, oh, if you give the candidate 1 million Ghana cities, the person will win. Because they know how to pull the strengths. We have uh, I mean, people influencing factors in every constituency that if you see this man, mm. or go and see Kojo Brace, he knows how to mobilize the people, and they, they, there's a tradition that they'll go through it. Uh, so I think that we need to go with the mindset of the people. If our mindset actually change, uh, um, there is no way we can be influenced, and it all boils down to empowerment. Mm. Look at the, the schools, mm. the feeding thing that we're talking about. If these children are not empowered to grow up, not to be dependent on others, but they strive on their own, no one would always place the best bet on mm. the political class to make the country better when you and I 
we have the time, power of the time to ensure that we get what we want. You know why I think that this one will be a very hard one to achieve. <laughs> when you go to our university campuses, yeah. that's where the actually starts. Yes. Yeah. Those you expect to even vote on issues, mm. those you expect to do better thinking into who they think could better represent them, rather sell their vote. Exactly. That's a, that's when I was on campus, I was, I, was, I was bemused about how, you know, we, we do this. And it, it's an open... And that's where the future well, leadership starts. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you see, even those of us in the universities are selling our vote. Yeah. How much more are mothers who struggle to even, uh, you right. know, provide three square meals for their children? So we need to start from somewhere. Yeah. And I think that probably the easiest target is to change the mindset of our, our students on the university campuses. Then we go down there because we are ambassadors. Yeah. We go down there and try to sit down with our parents and, and educate them that when it comes to voting, yeah. don't go for someone's 50 cities to change how you, you know, your, your pattern of thought. Mm. Whoever you think in your mind could do a better job, that's the person you go for, not yeah. the money. But it's interesting. One thing I picked away from this is the quality of agent mm. that both parties yeah, provide. Yeah, presented, yeah, yeah. That's one thing that if we could continue can really help our, our, our electoral processes. Because you have their lawyers, you have MPs, you have people who really know what they have to do. People that you cannot go and give them, say, 200 cities for them to leave the polling yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. So I think that one, one takeaway from this by-election mm -hmm. is that all the parties must look for people you know, of that caliber. Yeah. You know, to serve as a, a poly, polling agent for them, and I think that things will be great. Yeah. Well, let's start off from the ABC. It says, race to lead the MPP nomination opens today. Ready? Get set? Go. <laughs> now, uh, I'll bring you details of that. Greater Accra NDC chairman accused of pocketing Mahama Cash for delegate. Um, MPP's presidential primaries aspiring candidate must keep their supporters in check. Supreme Court sermons press a white over stupid uh, in court. Uh, stupid court comment. Okay. Now, let's start with the race to lead the MPP. It says the new patriotic party has open nominations for potential aspirants to pick forms to enable them contest in the upcoming presidential primary. The MPP, in a statement issued yesterday, signed by its general secretary, Justine Kodia Frimpong, said it, it was aiming to conduct a free, fair, transparent, and peaceful primary elections. According to the approved timelines, the nomination process will commence on Friday, May 26th, 2023, and close on Saturday, June 24, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, now, the party in March this year set November 4, 2023, as a date for its presidential primaries to elect a flag bearer for the general election in 2024. However, mm -hmm. if more than five candidates file to run in the primaries, the party will call a special congress mm -hmm. on August 26. Uh, 26. Okay. Now, the party also announced that pri parliamentary primaries will be held on February 24, 2024, and nomination will be, as will be accepted between December 20, 2023 and January 4, 2024. Okay. That's it. So, I mean, they have just uh, a one-month period to pick nominations. Um, and then the nomination starts today. Exactly. Uh, anyone who wants to pick the nomination starts at yeah. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And definitely will be there to pitch camp and mm -hmm. then we, uh, our listeners have to speak. But you know very well that so far some people have already declared their intention. Exactly, yes. You know the Greek minister, uh, a former Greek, Greek minister. minister. For yeah. former, oh, yeah. uh, former trade minister, Alan Chikojo Chairman Ting, mm -hmm. former general secretary of the party, Engineer uh, uh, Kwabna uh, Japan. Uh, Japan. Yeah. We have the vice president, uh, Dr. Mamudu Baumia. Mm -hmm. You also have... Uh, His is not official, though. I mean, he oh, no, no, no. He, he mentioned it at the Kuba he, he is, Japan, Exactly. You know? he's, he's already met the majority yeah. caucus that he will. All his pronouncements indicate. But we are waiting for the, the, the final, I mean, the declaration, official, official declaration. I mean, unofficial. In which I understand they'll be doing that sometime next week. I mean. <laughs> so let, let's, yeah, I go back. Yeah. yeah. And then you also have uh, a dynamo. Yeah. A dynamo is also running. Running. And, and yeah, well. Exactly. He's also shown interest. And then the former energy minister, mm. uh, Boache Japon. How about so, Mr. Jogate? Uh, Jogate is also in there. Okay. So it means that you are having more than five people. So definitely the, the August 26th. Uh, date would come off so okay. that they can, uh, but again, it, it, it tells, it, it depends on mm. at the close of nomination, okay. how many of those people who have Fine. declared intention would have filed. Mm. So it is on that expiration date that we will tell whether that particular special congress will come up. But for now, 
uh, from the onset, yeah. we know that there are more than five people Contest. who would want to. I only hope. Uh, I think sometime in 2008, they had over They had 17. Yeah. But this time, I'm not sure they, are, they, will, they, are, they will get 17. <laughs> I'm sure everybody is weighing his or her chances. Yeah, yeah. And they know that clearly the people that we've had want to come mm. are the kind of people that will have filing. But even that, mm. you ask the question, will all of them file? Well, yeah. And again, people have, and, and, and researchers mm. have tried to put the race between the vice president and the former trade minister. I, I know that Joe Gatte has also a very good chance because he was part of the 17 candidates, you remember, yeah, yeah. and he, he's, he stayed true to the party all this while. You know that uh, the former agri minister is also someone who is determined to also, also run. So, so in all this, I'm looking at the, mm -hmm. the representation, mm -hmm. the regional representation. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If you look at the structure of it, uh, where these candidates are coming from. I, I get I Dr. Mahmoud Bami are coming from yeah. the northern part of the country. He's the only one. He's the only one coming from the northern mm -hmm. part of the country. For at, at least for now. Yeah, for now. Mm -hmm. Now we have Ken, uh, a Japan, oh, Ken yes. a Japan coming from I the central region. Yeah, exactly. He's coming from the central region. Mm -hmm. Alan Chermantin is coming from the uh, Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. We also have the former uh, Greek minister, Dr. Ashanti Fri region. Yeah, Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Kobne, uh, Mr. Kobne Ejiji. Oh, yeah, Japan is also from the Ashanti so, region. So I'm, I'm looking at how... Adaini Mo is, is, the, is great. Exactly. Accra, right? No, Adaini Mo is also from the Ashanti. Also from Ashanti yeah, wow. He's from the Mampo area. Oh, so okay. we are looking at how they are going to contest for votes in their own backyard. Mm -hmm. So why can't you present one person from that particular region well, what, to get what, what is up there? needed support? And, but, but all of them say they can become flag bearers of mm -hmm. the party. So it will be difficult for you to then convince one to step aside. But what I know is that some of them are using their paternal and maternal okay, lineage, links, to, links okay. to get this done. For example, Alan Chamantins. Uh, mother, I think he's from Central Region. Yeah. So he's gone there to say, I am your brother. Yeah. Consider me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he so has you, one. You think the tribal card will definitely be played? Um, it will not too, you know, much, no. but it will have some effect. Okay. For example, everybody would want to say, this person is from my, yeah. my, my region or from my hometown. So it, it, it would be right for the person to say, I want to support. And Yogate, you know, is also from. Western and Central. Central, I see. So you also play that card. Those dynamics the, play. Is, exactly. So the thing is that, well, I don't see them agreeing that let you drop and let me go. You don't from foresee someone is maybe drawing no. at the point. No, no, no. no, no. It's they, like, they won't. Mm -hmm. Especially for the leading ones. Um, uh, former Greek minister. Yeah. He former trade a, minister. He's not someone like yeah. Kennedy Japan will not back down. <laughs> someone like Joe Gatti will not Politics back is a game of surprise. Maybe anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. Well, anyway. But, but <laughs> no, you, you know, sometimes you, you, have to, you have to look at the sort of campaign yeah. that they are executing. Yeah. If you look at the uh, Kennedy Japan campaign, mm. nothing about it will tell you, okay, well, We've seen one with the Dufour campaign. Yeah. So where did he like go? Said, so anything can happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's go yeah. to the Delhi guys. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, but you know that yeah. the contest really mm -hmm. will be between the two people. Yeah, so that, that's a, I mean, current, yeah. that's a presumption now. Mm -hmm. that, okay. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, 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 there have been researchers mm -hmm. that have put the race between the two people. Yeah. The vice president and the former trade minister. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Politics are full of surprises. So, so we, we have high researches that turn out not to be the situation mm. on the ground in politics. Mm. So let's go to Delhi guy. TikTok couple arrested for killing mm. son. Uh, you remember this story yeah, about yeah, a do. pastor and the wife, and then they allegedly killed their son because the father, according to the story, no, the are, father. Are they, are they, are they, are they yes. So that's what the story says. They they are based in Tema, and then um, the father allegedly killed the son no, because. But are they, are they, are they, yeah, that's what we're told. So, so we're told that the man was a pastor with a wife, and and some development leading to the death of their child led them to this particular uh, situation. So it's a shocking story that has emerged from the city of Tema in the Greater Accra region, mm. as the police go after a couple whose TikTok video. Uh, has gone viral in recent days. God Papa, the greatest, and Empress Lupita were seen in the videos engaging in various questionable actions, including smoking. However, the most disturbing uh, revelation came in after news um, interviews revealed that they, they confessed to killing one of their children because he was possessed by an evil spirit. According to Empress Lupita, her husband saw the future of their son as a demon who could potentially destroy Ghana. So they believed it was necessary to sacrifice him to save the nation. So this is actually what landed them to the police uh, cells. So investigations are still ongoing. And then... Um
to see what happened. I think the mother of uh, the pastor, mm. alleged a reported pastor, uh, has come to speak on the issue. I, I watched one particular interview of that sort, and then mm. she was lamenting about it. Now, yeah, the, I mean, the, when, when I saw the affairs yeah. video, I knew that mm. something is not right, right somewhere. Yeah. But we need to investigate this because exactly. allegations of them killing their own child, that's, yeah. that's murder, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that then goes against the laws of the country. So exactly. the police would have to investigate this mm. thoroughly for, for, for us to get to you know, a conclusive yeah, right. So I have no intention to divest GNPC stick that's coming from Fred Blay. You mm. know the uh, situation there at the GNPC where he has been accused of giving a contract to Petrol SA. But he has responded. He says that he has no intention to compromise or whatsoever to um, any international company to the detriment of the country. They are now acting CJ as judicial staff strike. You know, they are also complaining about their salary structure, and that is why they are still on strike. Mm -hmm. I know some calls have been made for them to return while they deal with the issue, but that is the situation. It comes at the time that the um, other chief justice uh, is stepping now, or retired, that was yesterday, or so in the course of the week, and then um, Mr. Um, chief Justice Doche now acting as a, as a CJ there. MPP press um, presidential nomination out. You have to pay 50000 if you're interested. Nana pushes for more intra-African trade. Uh, you know, yesterday was um, AU Day, uh, so it's coming from that. Um, we also have, um, in sports, cats not thinking of elections, captured on the back page of the Daily uh, Guide. The last report with me here is the Daily Statesman, uh, where RTI compliance to become part of performance agreements. And uh, that's uh, the big story to me there. And it's coming from the uh, information minister. So what they're going to do is that your performance as any head of institution in government will be based on the information, uh, the, how you respond to requests for information per the RTI uh, law. So that's what the information minister is saying. We only hope that uh, they go by it, but I think that will be uh, a motivation for them to perform because sometimes it, it has a lot that as a journalist you go out there you're looking for information regarding a particular story and uh, the information is not forthcoming uh, you make some requests and they have to delay you mm -hmm. over a longer period of time and I think with this coming in from the information minister that it will be part of their performance agreement I think it is in the right direction after a game changer for Africa Kufado calls for leadership commitment MPP poised for victory in a sin North by election. So after the Kumau by election, they are now turning their oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. arsenal as so to the uh, acid North constituency after the articulation uh, per the school, uh, Supreme Court's ruling uh, as the stripped of his, um, or the post, want of a better word, of his position as a member of parliament. Well, that's another seat that's going to be interesting uh, in that part of the country. Um, uh, we know that the NDC, when I spoke with them, they said they are presenting the same candidate. Uh, mm -hmm. The articulation will still go. We still yeah. go and contest the elections for the. Uh, I want it to be a dangerous one for them, because if the attorney general decides to pull the criminality aspect of this whole thing, yeah. then you risk having a candidate mm. who can go to jail, and then the seat will be declared vacant again. Well, we'll, we'll see how that will go. I know maybe the party has uh, put in place the rightful legal factors mm. to address that. In my conversation with Ms. Uh, uh, Malba some time ago, so this one should not be an issue. The party knows how to navigate around some of these issues. Um, unless, so they are telling us, unless they are telling us yeah. there's going to be a deal between them and the AG because there have been precedent to this particular case, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There have been MPs who have been uh, jailed mm. for same offenses. Yeah, popular one is a former MP for Boko. Is that? Remember, Ad Ad Adamusa Adamusa Kandi. Kandi, yeah. So if... if he, he was jailed. Mm -hmm. Why are we so sure that this one will not be jailed? Okay. And so he can be made to, to run again. I think that they have to look at it well. But uh, interesting days ahead. Let's yeah. see how sure. this particular one goes. Sure. But you know, the after mm -hmm. is a good thing. Just that many of the traders we have in Ghana, many of the companies in Ghana say that they are not taking advantage, they are not seeing the benefits. Okay. Because it, it looks like we are not really doing what we are supposed to do. It is just like the oil industry when it came. Yeah. Uh, many of our people were not prepared. Yeah. So we lost out on the opportunities. Yeah. What has been our preparation to take advantage of this uh, opportunity that AFTA presents? We haven't done much, have we? You Such see, that we my, my, know that our companies can, can compete here, but we have not done much to put them in, 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 in positions that they can take full advantage of, of, of AFTA.
Now, my, my challenge mm. with this after three has to do with the, within, within, within even the South African block, mm -hmm. we have like migration springs. You are going to Togo, within Africa here, how they have to scrutinize you, the language barrier is also uh, there, a whole lot of challenges. You meet some business people, talk to them, they'll tell you about some of the challenges that they, they face uh, when they get there, how to interact with other countries like the Francophone countries and then all that is, is a big uh, challenge for them. So I think the basis of it in coming to um, champion this after or mm -hmm. to get to the full realization has to do with some of these bottlenecks, how we can enhance our borders for mm -hmm. easy movement, uh, how we can reduce the taxes, well, how maybe I'm going to Cote d'Ivoire, how I wouldn't have to pay more coming from Cote d'Ivoire into Ghana, I wouldn't have to pay more into Ghana. So at least we will have a more subsidized business working environment. But if some of these bottlenecks are not resolved, it's like we don't have a common roadmap that, okay, this is how we should go about doing our businesses in the country and we still say, oh, after we have um, this is the interest to grow Africa and all those things, I don't think we would get to where we are expected to be. So yeah. a whole lot has to be done. The president has called for the consolidation of the gains and, and all that. So yeah. it has to take mm -hmm. more effort. Yeah. I mean, But what, whilst we look at it, way. my worry is that the companies who are complaining that it looks like we've not done much. Look, yeah. I, I saw the oil industry and how companies in Western region lost out. Yeah. And so I'm thinking that, are we going to do the same? Are we going to be here and say that we have the secretariat? Just last week, I think Guta also were complaining yeah. about the real impact of after. You have the office here, yes, the head of the headquarters the is here. Yeah. But how is it impacting businesses? Mm -hmm. So I want to see a situation where we prepare our businesses to to take advantage of all the opportunities that after, after presents. Yeah. Whilst we look at enhancing the bottlenecks in the system, because look, I have traveled along the Ghana, Togo, Benin, bo Nigeria border okay. and, and haven't liked what I saw. Mm. You know, way back in 2014, I was like, why would we really mm. have such a situation on our borders yeah. when we say, even that was, we had not even, I'm not sure we had even thought about after, mm. but we had ECOWAS. Yeah. You know, we're even thinking about uh, using the e ECO. Yeah. So if we have ECOWAS, mm. and as a Ghanaian student, I cannot move freely yeah. from Ghana through Togo, through Benin, through the Benin-Nigeria border, we, we had to return. Yeah. When we got to the Nigerian border from Benin, mm. we had to return because of setting misunderstandings. I was like, ah, we've shown you our passport that we are Ghanaian. Ghanaian, yeah. Why, why can't we have access to Nigeria? So that, that so, was one so, of the yeah, bottlenecks so, I was so, talking so, about. So those yeah. are some of the challenges we have to deal with. Yeah. But once we deal with it, we have to ensure that we position Ghanaian companies in, in, in such a way that we will not lose out on these opportunities that the AFTA presents. Mm. How are we ensuring that even SMEs yeah. will take advantage of SMEs in Benin, mm. SMEs in Nigeria, yeah. S, you know, uh, SMEs in South Africa, yeah. for us to grow? How are we ensuring that we do that? Yeah. If we don't ensure we build the capacities of, of these businesses, mm. we'll be here 10 years, 15 years, then we'll, we'll look back and say, oh, we've lost out on after. Just like we so, say, so, yeah. we've so, lost out on So there's a need, on, like, if you're doing industry. a particular business in Ghana, you mm -hmm. find a partner in Togo or yes. Benin, or you mm -hmm. can do some amalgamation, or you can even merge. You have, so that you have branches in all, so that you'll be able to um, impact meaningfully in both countries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it isn't the case that if you, are, if you are into a particular goods supply in Ghana, you get to Cote d'Ivoire, you're not struggling to get partners. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think if we open up, Businesses come together to merge. Mm. We have branches in each part of the in a part of the uh, yeah. Africa. It it makes businesses partnership quite, is stronger. I mean, quite Again, for, our business should also go to after and ask. I mean, we need to seek, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to seek for all of these opportunities. Go to after and ask them what sort of opportunities are there, and so we can see how you can take advantage. But let's go to myjoinline.com. There's one sad story there that I've been yearning to to <laughs> to read again. Now, um, okay, so on. We have textbook content yeah. on disadvantages of Christianity, obnoxious, yeah. uh, Deputy Education Minister. Mm -hmm. Judicial service appeals to JUSAC to call off strike amid talks with government. Mm -hmm. um, Professor White apologizes for insulting Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, motor rider dies after crushing pregnant woman to wow. death wow. in wow. Damongo. Wow. Uh, interesting. But mm -hmm. there's this story there about period poverty. Period, impregnated and infected with HIV mm. at age 12 wow. for want of a simple sanitary pad. Oh, it wrecks now, my heart. No, Charlie, let, let me tell let, you. Let, let me read. Let me read. Before you read the story, story eh, mm -hmm. let me just give you this brief history. Mm. I was working on a project mm. in one of the mining companies 
up north, specifically Talisi district. Now, what, I, what we discovered was that because of sanitary part, some of the mining boys abused the oh, girls. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. they don't, they, they, you know, I don't know whether it's synonymous to all mining communities, but, the, but that's where poverty is, is high. It is. There, so these a, girls a, are, are told that, okay, I'll take care of you, mm -hmm. and then whatever you want, I'll give you. Some of the girls told us that, oh, even sometimes to buy sanitary pad is it's a problem. And some of these girls will, uh, guys will lure them mm -hmm. because of sanitary pad. At that time, how much was it? Three cities. Now it's about 12 cities. And that's why some of us think that mm -hmm. there's a need for government to intervene. Mm -hmm. That people are no longer, I mean, I, I mean, some education is ongoing. So they are no longer using racks as a uh, sanitary pad. I beg your pardon for the morning, though. But the situation is so precarious to the extent that you go to some communities, girls as old as 17 years have not seen pad before. They have to use racks. They go to school, they are being mocked at and mm. all that. Mm. And I think this is an initiative that governments mm. must intervene, okay. must make sure that not because of these petty, petty things that mm. are essential, these are critical needs okay. for the growth of the girl child. So that at least all of these things will not be witnessed. Okay. It, it casts across. If you La last conduct the research, it will tell you more about last what month, I'm talking about. When there was this issue about Amansi South mm. and then they leading with teenage pregnancies, girls between... 10 and 14, more yeah. of them getting pregnant. They, the, one of the issues was the, uh, uh, you know, Galam the, the um, mining communities and yeah. how, how the guys there take advantage of these young girls. But this story, this, this particular story says, these are no tell tales. These are real stories of girls and women exposed mm -hmm. to sexual abuse and exploitation due to what has become known as period poverty. A fierce mother got sick when she was 12 years old. She had to move in to live with her auntie, uh, live with her auntie at Techiman where she was enrolled in a school. It was a school she first had her men's, something she lacked knowledge about. She soiled her uniform and boys in her class made fun of her. Wow. Like you said. Sad. When Afia got home and informed her auntie about her experience, mm -hmm. she was emotionally abused and received no support. Mm -hmm. Neither education on a menstrual cycle no access to sanitary pad. Yeah. She resorted to using toilet roll and went back to school after two weeks. Wow. wow. During her second menstruation, she saw her dress again. This time, a man in his 30s saw her in a state of distress and invited her home to wash down. <laughs> so that's, that's how you know, the whole thing started. You have to go and read the story. This is a very yeah, touching very story, story on myjohnline.com, written by um, our man in Kumasi, Kofi Edu Donfe. I mean, solid, it's it, 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 it really sad yeah. how a simple thing like sanitary pad can expose girls to such danger. Now, this young girl at age 12 was impregnated, yeah? yeah. And infested with HIV. All that's because a, she problem. couldn't afford. And again, look at how the story says her auntie treated her. Mm. When she went home and told her about her menses, mm. the auntie abused her emotionally. You know, she was not educated on the menstrual cycle, nothing. Yeah. She, she wasn't supported. So when you do that, you leave the children at the mercy of irresponsible men in society I remember who would want to sleep with these young girls mm -hmm. just because they, they can provide something small. You know, a, a girl at, at the age of 12, I mean, yeah. what does she have? Really? I remember when I was in primary five, I had a mate. Uh, she didn't know that her menstrual cycle had changed. She mm. came to class, and you know, we're wearing what we call popularly tea, <laughs> tea and bread. <laughs> the top um, yellow and then khaki down and all that. So, like, we, sh she, she got up from the class. It was break time. She was stepping out, and we saw the stains. And then one of her colleagues had to run with a pullover and then go and cover her waist. And trust you, they, they, the whole of that with the girl wasn't herself. Mm. For the fact that she felt embarrassed mm. that her other colleagues had seen her messes while she was in class or her uniform being stained. Look at someone who was not even abused. Really, the boys in the class didn't abuse her, but she felt that trauma. So imagine in her situation, for instance, a parent, you're not educating the child, that you need to know that when you get a particular age, this is what you need to do. Maybe starting from age 12, you educate even age 10. You tell them the essence of some of these developments that you will be going through as, as a girl and the likely consequences that you are going to face. Parents are unable, or most parents are unable. I'm talking about the rural context. Mm. In Accra here, I mean, you may find it, oh, 12 cities is cheap. 
But 12 CDs is someone's chop money for about two days in some of the communities in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So if, I beg to be corrected though, but the last time I checked, yesterday I had a conversation with some of our few, uh, my colleagues in the newsroom. They told me that, okay, sanitary pad is not like 12 CDs. So 12 cities, how many people can afford sanitary pad in the rural areas for 12 mm -hmm. cities? Mm -hmm. So I, when, when I hear stories like this, it touches me a lot because I have I've seen it, I've felt it, I, I know what is going on. If you're in Accra here, you may not appreciate what I'm talking about. If you go down there, go you out there, it. go to the hinterlands, mm -hmm. I bet you, you weep. Okay. You weep. Uh, these are very, very uh, trying ones and I hope that if you can help someone without yeah. taking any ad taking ad advantage of, of, of the young girls mm -hmm. it would all help us build a better society well that's it for the headline uh, uh, the newspaper review would bring you prime take but I would want to say a good morning to lawyer Andre Japamesa oh, okay. the, the deputy minister for energy mm -hmm. yesterday was his birthday I so, so lawyer Mesa Good morning to you. This is the only second day for you now, so we'll on the page. And if you're more there, in the morning, you the weekend, so you'll be able to share downtown, and you'll be able to share with you. So that's it. Uh.